Hello, uh, my name is Luca. I work as a software engineer at Microsoft. And after shepherding this room the whole day, I am absolutely knackered. So please bear with me as I stumble across this talk. Somehow we'll get to the end, I promise. So I'm um, talking to you about portable services. These were mentioned in the talk previous to the last, which is nice. So this is a feature that is not new. It was introduced um, back in 2018. So uh, Leonard wrote a very nice intro and work through back then uh, in version 2.39. Um, but things have changed quite a lot since then. We added a bunch of features on top and working on more. So that's why I wanted to represent about them. And also because I think it's a little known feature and it's uh, very powerful. Uh, so I want people to know about it. Um, so this is ideal for system services that um, integrate tightly with your host OS, but come with their own file system. So it's not for containers where they service the external world over the internet, so a database or something. It's for your system services that interact with the hardware or the kernel or the host. And it works really nicely with that. Um, it, as we heard in the previous talk, this stuff is extremely unopinionated on how you deliver them, how you build them. That's good. That is by design. Because everybody has a different build system, science system, production system. So this doesn't care at all. You just put an image there. The only thing you need is an OS release file, system D unit file. That's it. And anything else doesn't matter. Um, once you install these services, you attach them, then they look and feel like a normal system D system service. Your standard command, system CTL, just work. Um, the focus is on security by default, especially lately. Um, and we, uh, we support some boxing with a predefined set of um, profiles, we call them, a predefined set of options to uh, lock down your service, but you can add your own, of course. Um, so that's the history, new features since they were introduced. Sign the Verity, this is uh, most important for me. So portable images can optionally um, use sign the Verity. So if you have a single facility image, so MK squash FS, a directory, um, then if you also deploy a dot .verity, dot .rutash, and dot .rutash p7 files, uh, we call them sidecar, Lennart loves them, and then they are auto-discovered and used if present. If you use a GPT image, so a single file image with the partition table, then the discover partition specification is used to discover the Verity uh, metadata. And again, automatically used if present. Um, the authentication and integrity of these images is the first and foremost thing that we focus with these things. If uh, focusing on this means you use more disk space, so be it, that's fine. For us, security is first, everything else is second. Um, this is especially important because if uh, signatures are used, then uh, uh, your chain of trust is rooted into the firmware. Um, you can use, uh, to sign these images, a key that is in the trusted keyring, which is the, the one that you bake into the kernel image. Or you can use the machine keyring, uh, that is the one that you have if you use mock, for example, and shim. Or since kernel 6.11, also the platform keyring, which is the UFI DB. So in, in case you self-enroll on secure boot, you can also use the same key to sign your DM Verity images. Um, this allows full code integrity um, on your system, thanks to a new LSM that just will go upstream in 6.12, code IP. We'll see more about this later. Uh, by the way, I'll show a demo at the end showing all this stuff, how it works together. This is fundamental. We get full code integrity with this stuff. Um, next feature, um, stacking images. So this is very important for the Azure use case. Um, so this is X. The previous talk uh, was about them. Actually, the reason I introduced those was for portable services. But of course, you can use them for the host as well. And we've seen what they are. No reason to go um, again over them. Um, but the idea of the stacking here is that we borrow the idea from the flat pack world. So you have a runtime. We call them a base image. You can call them whatever you want. And the runtime is shared among many portable services. That way, you can deduplicate your DM Verity volume at the device mapper level. And uh, you pay the cost only once. Uh, your applications, developers, and um, builders and deployers just deploy their applications. And me, as the OS team, uh, deploy the base, which has libc, uh, boost, uh, libc++, uh, OpenSSL, whatever else. So we service the OS level libraries. The application developers service their own images. And we stack them together. Very simple. You do a touch as a extension parameter, and you pass um, app.row, for example, if you have an app service. And in, if you, in this mode, um, the extension must have the units, 
and the base must have the OS release, and we match OS release in the base with extension release in the app, as we saw in the previous talk. You can add as many as you want to a single attach operation, and extremely importantly, we do not merge these layers at build time, we do not merge them at install time, we merge them at runtime with the overlay, with only over AFS. Next one, um, Confex, so I think it was mentioned this morning, um, this is the same concept as Sysext, but for configuration. So you have the HTC instead of the user. Why is this important? So that you can deploy configuration updates, again, that are signed, and uh, which uh, is important because, again, you can do configuration integrity with this in the future. And you, since systemd 256, you have the VPIC stuff, so you can deploy multiple versions of your configs, and we pick the automatically the newest version with a version compare on the images in a specific directory. And in the next version, um, I hope to have a uh, refreshing of configuration. So if your portable service is configured to use Confext from a VPIC directory, you hit systemctl reload, and the service without being interrupted or restarted will see, uh, we get a new overlayFS mounted in its own private mount namespace, and then it gets the SIG up. Um, again, I will show this later. But um, this is work in progress. Hopefully, we we'll get that sorted. New feature as well. Uh, I forgot the version here. I think it was two years ago. Um, upgrade. So at the beginning, um, you had to completely detach a portable service to put a new version in. And that's kind of bad because you cannot detach without stopping the service. You cannot just restart it. And then you have to stop, detach, attach, start. That means there is a long interruption window. Lots of I.O., lots of IPC, and you cannot use the FD store, for example. Um, that means a, a big interruption of service uh, for whatever the portable service is providing. Uh, now we have the reattach option. Um, basically, we uh, upgrade the images in place. The service keeps running. It doesn't notice anything um, until we are done. And then we restart existing units, uh, stop and remove uh, the ones that are gone, no longer visible, and start new units. So the interruption window goes from um, managing all the images uh, to just manage, manage images before, and then do the short restart operation, which is uh, much faster and uh, allows you to use the file descriptor store as well to fast rehydration uh, for your um, services. Um, I already mentioned the VPIC stuff, uh, same thing for the upgrade. If you point a uh, portable serial attached to app.v, um, you just drop a directory in there, uh, sorry, a new image in there, you do reattach to app.v and we automatically find a new version. Um, kind of feature it, uh, so we was mentioning a talk before how to build this stuff. Uh, MKU design and uh, system D repart support this stuff. Again, it's, it's by design that there is no prescribed way you must do this to build these images. But, um, no, so if you are doing a single voice system image, so SquashFS, URFS, it's kind of trivial. Like you build a directory, do MK SquashFS, and maybe very set up format. It's trivial. If you're doing GPT images, that's more annoying because you have to do a partition uh, table and everything else. Um, so system D repart in 255 gains some uh, parameters where you can just do make DDI equal portable or sysext, and then it will do the G magic GPT stuff for you, which is great, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, MKUSI um, can create extensions on top of base images, so you uh, convert appropriately, and then it will create a base image for you and a sysext, which uh, you can uh, deploy as a stacked portable um, service. Uh, again, everything is absolutely optional. Um, Kind of feature, new feature, but very related because we develop them for, we develop software boot explicitly for the portable service case. In 254, if you, um, we have a talk last year about this, um, you can restart the user space portion of your operating system without restarting the kernel. So it's uh, quite fast. And one of the things we can do with this is that given a portable service by uh, definition runs on a separate image, not on your root FS, we can keep it running. So if you do this very easy and short configuration in your service file, um, then if you or, uh, root of S, your OS is updated with a software boot, this will, service will keep running and with no interruption whatsoever. Uh, network, uh, data storage, this all are still available where it happens. 
So your service will just continue doing whatever it needs while the OS is updated, um, which is kind of neat. So future features. Now, this might or might not show up upstream. They will for sure show up in my GitHub. Um, but uh, the, there is one thing that we were missing in our integrity story, which is when you attach a portable service to a system, we have to write files to the HTTC. Because we just extract the unit file and we copy it under uh, etc systemd system.attached and then we generate a drop-in that points to the images that we are using. Um, this means this, uh, you, you do not have any integrity checks. So we have integrity checks when we install it, but not when we run it. And that's kind of bad, and I'll show in the demo later why. Um, so if you have an otherwise read-only system, um, this is kind of a hole. So, well, one thing I'm working on is that, oh, and the reason why it is particularly bad for um, drop-ins or services is that you know you can have arbitrary code execution in there. You can add access to start pre sh minus c whatever, and that will run on an extra boot, uh, which is kind of not great. Um, so the solution that I came up with is using FS Verity signatures. So if you ship a signature in the portable image, we will automatically apply to the unit. Uh, that we extract. And also, if you know what the installation paths for your images are, um, then you can also pre calculate your drop in and then generate a signature for that. And so we cover all the systemd configuration files with these integrity checks. Um, the next one so, uh, a low level um, system service very often needs to interface with Dbus or with Polkit. Very simple example, you want to provide a service over Dbus. Um, there is no support for this right now um, the, because uh, Dbus needs to have a configuration file in its configuration directory to see that there is a, a service that um, needs to be activatable. Um, the solution is that you simply ship uh, these files in your Zresh user, in your portable image, and we extract them to uh, etc for Dbus with the same FS Verity stuff that I showed before for integrity, same reasons. And we have some naming constraints to avoid weird stuff. So if you have a service foo, then your dbus file, which is usually in the form org free desktop dot something dot conf, it must contain foo. You cannot ship org free desktop system need one and override the system need conversion files. And um, yeah, so let's look at the demo, of course, because I am a coward, I recorded the demo, I'm not doing it live. Um, so what we're showing here, I just picked a random a uh, demon I had on my system, uh, Realm D, which is some Kerberos thing, I think. Uh, I never heard of it before. Um, but it was very easy to, uh, to hack on. It already had Polkit and Dbus support. Um, so I made this into a portable service. So we will see it running not on a Debian testing uh, image built with MKUSI. So it has a UKI, all signed, and uh, with the DM Verity with a FES, again, all signed, and with a new IP LSM. So the IP LSM is on. Um, uh, LSM that allows you to write uh, policies that enforce uh, uh, code signing for your um, for your code or for configuration in the future. Um, now this requires a bunch of work in progress stuff for Polkit and Dbus. Uh, we have agreements on doing this, so it's just a matter of reviewing them. And uh, there are the recipes for building um, the the kernel with MKUSI over there. So let's switch to the video. Where is my mouse pointer? There we go. So we are on a Debian service, uh, Debian system, VM. Uh, kernel is again uh, Linux next as it was two weeks ago. So because of the IPLSM, um, as you can see, uh, just standard Debian testing. So the uh, root file system is the Verity, uh, AUFS, with the uh, hash and signature, again built by MKUSI, uh, fantastic tool, and some var on BTRF, BATRFS. And you can see that um, uh, the Enverity for the rootfs is signed and uh, enforced by the kernel. Um, so then we uh, also have a look because the uh, rootfs is read-only, uh, we have to write some stuff. Uh, as we just saw, the solution we use in um, in Azure is that we have some symlinks pointing to to var for the directories that we want to to be have writable because they have to be. In this case, we have a Dbus pocket and system attached pointing to slash var. Um, then, now, this is the interesting part. Um, IP, so this is an IP policy. We load this, it's loaded into the kernel. Uh, the first line there, so this says, do not allow any execution of any binary 
unless it is DM Verity signed or part of InterD. The, this is upstream in 6.12. The next part is for the um, uh, read, read policy. This is not yet upstream. We use it in Azure, and we have some plans to try and upstream that. But basically, it says, um, apart from the first three files, which are generated locally, like the machine ID, um, everything else in Zest ETC must be integrity protected. If you try to read a file in Zest ETC or in one of those directory in VAR, and they are not verity protected, with signature enforced by the kernel, we deny that. So let's see this in, uh, um, so for example, we just copy LSS to a TMP, we try to run it, nope, you cannot run that, because it, in just users, is signed, that's fine, in the temple you copy, it's not. So let's try to uh, hack some stuff, some stuff in there. We uh, poke it, start some boot, um, we try to um, shove some um, uh, horrible hack in there to see that uh, it doesn't work, so we, we try to do crimes. Um, so we do a, uh, we move that into the, the drop-in, so in theory this should be read or systemd, we reload. Ah, there's an error. Uh, that means we can't read that. As you see here, in the, it didn't run, so there's no XSRP in there. There are no crimes being committed. We check also the journal. Nope, no crimes. That was denied. The read was denied there to systemd. Systemd cannot read that drop-in file. It's not allowed by the kernel. Um, Next, so let's look at the portable service. So why is this important? Because you have a full read, read only system with integrity policies. How do you deploy code? How do you deploy configuration? Portable services. So RealmD, um, again, built with MKUSI. Um, EROFS, uh, the Verity signed everything. Um, so we have that. Um, we attach it with a base image. Uh, the base we use there is on here. Um, it's again Debian, uh, just a Debian uh, testing, and we have attached that. You can see we started a bunch of files, including the Dbus integration and poke it. Um, so now, if we do busctl, we haven't started the service. We we can Dbus Dbus broker already knows it's there. The moment we extracted the file in the right location, Dbus knows it's there. It can be activated. Um, standard system service. So how do you if you have a in this case, as usual, you have a service and a command line to interact with it, right? That's a standard um, way of deploying this, the, these services, well, services like systemd, systemctl. RealmD is the same. There's a Realm binary that you uh, invoke on in the CLI to interact with it. So the way to use these binaries is you use the same image that was attached to the system with systemd run. It's exactly the same stuff, same implementation, same DM verity protections. System Iran minus T for um, pipe into the console, and then we pass the same exact same images, and we run run discover minus V, which is connects to some network stuff. Try to see if there's anything configured. Of course not. It's a VM. I don't have any Kerberos. I don't know how to do that, um, but it works. So we activated Roundy over the bus, and Roundy connected to network manager, and did its thing, and there was nothing. So this all works quite nicely with the bus integration. You can see it's attached there, so the base is shown as a separate image uh, for reasons. Um, now we attach something else. Um, this is a random script. I'm showing this because we are using the same base image. Yeah. Different application, same base image, and we attach it to a system. Um, there is no fourth image. We are not duplicating the base. The base is the same. We look it up by rootash. So we know it's the same, it's the right one, and we just reuse it at the device mapper level. Of course, it's a private mount, how it's supposed to be. It's remounted privately in its namespace, that's how it's supposed to be, but it's the same device mapper, so you don't pay the verity cost twice. It's kind of expensive. Um, so now we have this service, just a stupid uh, slip, and it works, and RealMD also works, it's there. Um, and now, ah, now the configuration file. So, we have some context. We want to update the configuration of this portable service, Ramni, um, live as we are running it without interrupting it. So um, we move this prepare config in the .v directory. There they are, there's two, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. We do a reload, and this takes a while because it's verity. We need to move that asynchronously. Not done yet. No. Um, the, the, the first line is when Ramni started. Um, there were only configuration files in slash user, two of them. The reload, um, 30 seconds later, same process, 6.30, no interruption, no restart. 
it also found the etc realm D, which I added with context. So I deployed a configuration file. It's not on the host. I cannot see on the host. This is a private mount. That's how we want it. Um, but the service could see that. And without any interruption, same process. Now we remove it, uh, simulate a rollback, reload again, and check again the log. It reloaded, and this time it's gone again. Um, so this show, just show um, just a, a simple rollback of the configs. Um, and yep, that's it. OK, so back to the slides. Right, uh, I'm doing perfectly fine on time. Questions? Oh, thank you. Any questions? Yes. So, uh, yeah, great demo. The systemd run part for the CLI tools, I mean, uh, kind of verbose, like. Yes, it is very verbose. Um, I don't know what to do there. I, I don't care too much, but we, if we had some nice abstraction for that, we thought about it sometimes. It would be nice if you had um, some way to run commands against a predefined portable so you can do the images automatically. Yes, there, we need some porcelain there, absolutely. This can be run very verbose. We use it with scripts, so it doesn't matter too much. But yes, you're right, we need some porcelain there. It would be nice to have, uh, not just there, but other commands as well. System analyze, we want to have some stuff uh, we didn't manage to. But yes, uh, it would be nice to have. Send us PRs. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, please, continue. I'll keep going if no one else is. Um, so in your demo system, uh -huh. um, was, you know, I keep asking this question for people, was Etsy persistent? Like, I guess I'm curious for in your model, right? Like, I understand the value of IPE, uh, yeah, even denying, like, if somehow you have some process that's root on the system and writing into a yeah. tempo fast. Yeah. I get that. But yeah, I guess that was a baseline mechanics question. Like, in the model you're uh, promoting here, is the system kind of otherwise stateless uh, apart from the portable it's services? It's completely read only. There is state in var, um, some stuff there, like images, you need to deploy them somewhere. So the state goes in var. And you have some things that, you know, I, I showed the symlinks. So the, the ETC is fully read only in our system. Uh, we deploy the configs, we deploy the SysX, the portables in var, uh, they have to go somewhere. But the configuration is read only, apart from the things that have to be writable that are symlink to var. That is uh, not exactly like that, but the, the structure is different, but the concept is the same that we use in Azure for five years now. Two minutes. Have you tried putting uh, very more complex services such as libvirt or incus into, uh, into portable services? Um, we have very complicated services running like this in Azure, so yes. So nice thing about portables is that you decide what your security baseline for the sandboxing is. Um, it can be as little as nothing, just the images or it can be completely secure with a dynamic user, private user namespaces, network namespaces, or anything in between. Uh, in my use case, I have like three profiles that I use. One is they run as root, uh, one is they run completely unprivileged, and one is in the middle, they run with some supplementary groups and with some ambient capabilities. But th this is the nice thing about this stuff. Y you make your own, uh, you choose your own destiny here in regards to sandboxing. And it can be as complicated as you want. We have stuff that manages, you know, an FPGA, um, and taking the, some PCI stuff from the kernel and doing incredibly complex stuff that does everything. So yes, you can. I mean, I've never tried Incus, so I don't know, but you can do some complex stuff. Yes, absolutely. One minute left. All right, well, thank you very much.